Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into the week ahead. There is a lot. There is a lot to discuss. There's a lot to uncover, especially when it comes to these retrogrades and how they're going to be impacting not only the globe, the world, which we're seeing in the economy, politics, stock market, keep your eye out for that, but also in our intimate lives, especially when it comes to relationships, interpersonal relationships, communication, money, resources, all of those things are going to be impacted. Okay, not only do I have the astrology chart pulled up here on my right, and I'm looking at the clock right now, it's 444, but I'm also going to be shuffling and working with the tarot in order to get a really good nitty gritty idea of what it is that we can expect energetically. I love working with my intuition, not only with the astrology chart, but with the tarot as well. So if I were you, I would get cozy, I would get comfortable, I would grab some water, grab some tea, grab some coffee, whatever it is that you're sipping on, let me know down in the comments and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, darling, so we officially have the chart pulled up. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen for you so you can follow along as best as possible. And let's go ahead and dive right in. So I want to start off talking to you guys about the astrology transits, number one. Why? Because we have a transit that is starting this week, actually, August 5th, the time that it is that I'm filming this, Mercury retrograde. And this is going to paint the scope of what it is that we can expect in our intimate lives almost immediately right away we are in the thick of it as we speak now for those of you guys that have heard about mercury retrograde or even haven't it's one of the more popular transits or seasons that we talk about of all the retrogrades we're always talking about mercury retrograde the reason why is because it's one of the more easier ones to talk about because it rules those small nuances of our day-to-day -day life from communication to conversations, relationships of with people of the past, they have a way of recycling and returning back into our lives. And we have to kind of face those conversations and those people once again. They also, it rules transportation and our ability to get from point A to point B. It works the technology that is that we work with every day that makes our lives more convenient or more annoying. And when the planet itself goes retrograde, we start to see all these these small things kind of breaking down and it can be really annoying. Having said that though, we can't overlook the fact that there are four major energies that are retrograde right now, also simultaneously with Mercury retrograde, that's Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, and Chiron. We've been dealing with these energies almost all, all year round and then some. And not only are we facing those retrogrades along with Mercury retrograde now joining in the mix, but we also have Uranus transiting through Taurus. And this is something that I really want us to not overlook or get too overly consumed with the fact that Mercury is retrograde and we're not realizing like some of these major issues that are circling in our lives and resurfacing into our lives are not directly connected to Mercury ruling those smaller bits, but these larger planets, whether they're retrograde or, or direct. For example, I don't know if you guys are keeping your eyes on the stock market and finances, economy, and resources, but just today and yesterday, it's August 5th is the day that it is I'm talking to you guys now. So this was um, starting the 4th and into the 5th, the stock market plummeted. These are things that I've been telling you guys to keep an eye out for, that there's gonna be these incredible swings of resources, abundance, money, especially when it comes to stocks, and then this loss, right? That is so unpredictable so extreme, very, very extreme. We're also seeing the same thing when it comes to weather and climate change. Basically what this is doing is helping us to become more aware of what is um, needing our attention right now. Some really underlying issues that needs our attention right now. Economy, globe, resources, um, medicine, aesthetics, believe it or not, like beauty is changing, how we spend our money is changing, what we value is changing. We went from being a society all over the globe that was prioritizing consumerism and spending, 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 and then we switched over to minimalism and then trying to be more simplistic, making sourdough bread, all of those things were things that we talked about on the YouTube channel and now we're in the thick of it. Let me know down in the comments if you remember me telling you guys that the world is going to, their values are going to switch from 
what is easy and accessible, like in access to trying to do everything from scratch. And that's literally where it is that we're at right now. Leaning back into the fact that Mercury is retrograde, this has a tendency to bring up issues people from the past. This is where I really wanna shuffle the tarot and see what this energy has in store for us while we talk about it a little further. I did wanna set up the camera so that you guys could see me shuffling. However, Mercury retrograde, I was just saying like, you know, Mercury retrograde kind of creates these like small, smaller nuances and irritating situations. Mercury retrograde, I can't find my stand that I was just thought like maybe it might be where I put my essential oils, but it's not up there. I can't find it. So I'm gonna ask for my partner to help me <laughs> look around for it um, as soon as this video is over. And I, moving forward, you guys are gonna be able to see me shuffle while I'm talking to you, while we're conversing. I know that you guys love to see, see the cards as I'm shuffling them, definitely. So I've heard you and we'll definitely make those changes, definitely, but, um, while we're chit-chatting but for now we're gonna keep it old school so yes mercury believe it or not is transiting through virgo venus is transiting through virgo and this can create i it, it can create like these small like um like uh irritating annoying annoying type of bits of pieces of information conversation uh, also, it calls into question our discernment when it comes to who it is that we're talking to, what is in our life, who is in our life, why we're interacting with them. That is what Virgo is all about. It's all about like processing who is in our space, who is taking up our energy, who deserves our time, and what do we give to that? Like what, what, what do we contribute to that? When Mercury is retrograde, there might be something that could be like a lingering worm in the back of your mind that bothers you about a conversation or something that was left unsaid or something that was said and what did you mean when you said that so this is where you might be able to see people who you have that connection with keep in mind that it's not just you that's under this umbrella of energy but it's also others other people are experiencing the same transits and energy as you so you may be completely unaware and oblivious and this person is bothered by a small detail a small nuance from the past and it comes up and repeats and recycles and wants to be reconsidered and handled and addressed at, at this point right Another way to work with Mercury retrograde during this season is to, oh my goodness, my iPad. Um, another way to work with these uh, th th with this transit during this season is to make a little extra space when it comes to travel, transportation, so that if anything does kind of break down or if your tires need to be inflated, if you need to get a tune-up, if something just kind of pops off when it comes to your transportation or things that again take you from here to there whether it be communication whether it be plans scheduling whatever that you are you've already planned accordingly so there's a lot of flexibility and wiggle room this is not the time for procrastination if you are someone who procrastinates uh usually this retrograde definitely this season with mercury transiting through with through virgo it will do more harm than good it will create more annoyances than any other time so i want to look at some of the tarot cards that we pulled for mercury retrograde and just kind of seeing what's happening here the first card that we have is the ace of cups reversed however i don't know why it's not focusing ace of cups reversed clarified by the five of pentacles then we have the world card reversed again talking about energy or things that have been left incomplete not said not there's no conclusion there's no what is it called like closure seven of wands reversed this closure that we're missing or this closure that is that you're lacking is probably coming from something or someone that didn't want to be confronted this has a lot to do with emotion that has been sitting on this person or sitting on you it could have a lot to do with guilt is one of the words that's coming through like guilt or someone who um should have offered i don't say like an apology but offered some type of explanation and that they're not ready to deliver that they're not interested in delivering that they they 
for whether it be ego, whether it be in the moment they were more guarded and, and defensive than anything else that was their priority was to protect themselves over considering the ramifications, like the the long-term effects of how this would imp impact you or the relationship. This could also have a lot to do with um, separation, right? So breaking up five of pentacles here. This is where there's like splits of some sort, separation, um, I think I said breaking up already, but like mourning the loss of a friendship or something that is connected to the loss of someone or something like a friend, like um, uh, just uh, to me, I don't see this as on, I don't want, I don't want to say honest. I, I don't see this as upfront conversation or communication. I see this almost as like ghosting. So this can leave someone, the openness of it has so many questions than answers and doesn't sit well on that person's spirit. On the flip side, this energy of Mercury retrograde showing up now is interesting because we have the High Priestess and we have the Page of Wands reversed. Both of these cards are reversed. So subconsciously, this is something that has been lingering with this person and they haven't been able to move away from it. It's like someone who constantly gets reminded of this person, this connection, this relationship, this conversation or whatever happened here. It just kind of shows up subconsciously. Like we just kind of see it in different things. Like think about someone who has a song that they love and that song rep rep represents this relationship. I'm gonna sneeze. Yeah, so this song represents that relationship with that person and then they hear that song and it reminds them of that person. And then they look over and they smell a certain smell and it that's that person's perfume or sense of humor, a joke that they would normally laugh at together. It's there and you just, it, there's these constant re reminders in the back of your mind. It's not that you're actively facing or chasing or trying to confront the memory of this person or the situation. It's that the situation subconsciously keeps circling and finding its way into your reality. So you have no choice but to accidentally keep facing it in different ways. So I do see someone trying to suppress those emotions, whether it be you or someone else. The other thing is I feel like someone here felt that they had to, I don't know if they felt that they had to walk away. I don't know if this is you or the other, the other, but there's like a need to kind of walk away from something for your highest and greatest good. And either the way that the person walked away isn't healthy or it's delayed in some way. Like the way that you're supposed to cut things clean, it just doesn't seem like a clean cut. It seems like, I don't want to say self-focused, but like you're only prioritizing your convenience in the moment or doing what's like taking the easy way out in the moment. Um, if this has to do with jobs, this is where a situation gets downsized in a place where you should have been protected um, or a, a person's job should have been protected. They get downsized or there's something, I don't say unfair, but there's like an overlooking of someone. This is where you may hear about that job offer, that job opportunity kind of recycling again and saying, okay, who we hired or what, the, we, we, we changed plans again, we, we pivoted and we see your value. Are you open to working with us? You know, So keep an eye out for that. It has a lot to do with communication. I don't wanna say guilt, but things that we don't address, right? The things that we don't address or the things that we don't have closure with have a way of circling in the next two and a half weeks starting today of, of you watching this video, if you're watching it when I drop it for the moment. Um, I want to ask for any type of advice that is that you need to hear when it comes to this connection. I also want to pivot Queen of Swords, my loves. This has Mercury in Virgo written all over it, even though the Queen of Swords is not ruled by Earth. She's actually air. Uh, when Mercury retrograde or direct is transiting through Virgo, there is this hyper need to focus on our discernment. Discernment can only come from our higher selves or a higher power when we at, like actively 
pursue authentic authentic communication with the powers that be that are for our highest and greatest good only hurting and harming no one that's a whole mouthful right there but basically we don't want to allow our emotions our intellect to guide the ship of your life you want to be able to understand what is that you're thinking and processing and analyzing about a situation feel your feelings but at the same time not allow those two things to rule you we want to go to a place that inner sanctuary that inner sacred space ask for discernment ask for clarity what is it that is in my best interest and the best interest for all that is for everyone's highest and greatest good what do i do in the situation what do i need to know about the situation is the situation right for me that is something that can only be answered authentically and will help you move with integrity always if you are consulting your inner your inner compass your inner guide right whether that come from god if you call it god the divine the universe your angels your guides your ancestors whoever so we want to make sure that you are asking for the discernment of i don't you don't want to be someone who's just allowing everything into your life because you're generous because someone needs help because you need help or whatever the situation is not everything is a yes and not everything is a clear, distinct no, but you will know the difference when you ask for discernment and you get those answers. And that's not something that is usually should be rushed. These retrogrades, I wanna to talk to you guys about them. These retrogrades remind us that we should not be pushing past anything. We should not be pushing past anything. Pluto retrograde and the sign of Aquarius is, I'm gonna leave out the global part of it because we talked about that a lot when it comes to your intimate life. It is teaching you how to disconnect so that you can separate yourself from the quote unquote powers that be so that you can empower yourself within and also help to heal yourself on so many different levels, but also how finding re refinding your purpose, your freedom and like your personal expression, like what is makes you unique and eccentric and makes you tick as a human being as a person we're revisiting that if there's anything that has been holding you back low self-esteem uh toxic relationships patterns of ways of living that just do not serve you any any longer you're going to be able to see it during pluto's retrograde right now saturn is doing the same thing where we have to enforce our boundaries we have to understand how things energetically influence us we have to understand that there is more to the world than what meets the eye these are things that impact us every day but oftentimes in different societies we overlook them that's a problem saturn retrograde is teaching us to reprioritize the energy that we give off or that we give off and the things that are going on energies that are exuding off of uh, the world around us, people, places, things, events, stuff that we find ourselves entangled in. Also boundaries, boundaries. Where do I begin and where do they begin? Where do I end and where do they begin? Neptune is doing the same thing, asking us to keep a very strong eye on our intuition, to, it tests, it tests our faith big time. It is calling us to question our spirituality or redefine our spirituality or go back to our spiritual roots. This is where people who would normally be like practicing witches, maybe going back into Christianity or flipping and finding the opposite. You know what I mean? Um, that's just an example that is that I've been seeing and, and observe, observing. And it makes a lot of sense as we look at the astrology charts. It's where you kind of find your truth Sorry guys, I got Franklin over there chewing on a bone. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the microphone. I try to change it so that you don't hear my partner um, in the background. He's working from home today. And I don't know if you can hear Franklin. He's over by these boxes of orders that are gonna get sent out. Speaking of which, really random. I know that we're pretty far into the video today, but I did reopen a per request because there's so much going on in the world. The protection oils, the protection intention oils, they are being sent out. There's minimal amounts. You guys know I'm on uh, maternity. Well, <laughs> I'm not on maternity leave yet. Can you believe that? <laughs> but I should be. But I've been working on orders. There's more more than I was expecting. And I, it's just different. It's just different. 
uh, why am I talking about that right now? Oh, yeah, so this is gonna be our last um, batch, or not batch, I don't wanna say that, but this is the last, yeah, I'll call it batch of orders that are going out, and then for real, for real, I'm going on maternity, but I have some protection oils right underneath the camera. So for those of you guys that need that, it will, this is the last item that it is that I'm keeping in the shop before uh, my daughter's born. And then we're gonna take, we're gonna see how long we need to take time off, we don't know. And you guys are gonna see a little baby Bahati. Can you believe that? Wow. And uh, yeah, the shop will reopen in, in a stint. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just kind of staying open and asking for guidance with that as well. And for those of you guys that said congratulations and baby registry beyond, thank you. Thank you so much. Those, those the comments, the love, the books, I put a lot of books on, on the baby registry. It's just like, we just got, um, I'm going off on a tangent again, but we just got a, a set of Dr. Seuss books delivered to the house, the classics. I know that everybody, like as more, as time goes on, we start learning more about the history of like authors and controversy start revealing themselves. But I just wanted the classics. I put um, Harold, Harold in the Purple Crayon. I put the Dr. Seuss books classics on there. I put Berenstein Bears. I did, um, if, you give a, if you give a mouse a cookie, those are the cla those are the things I can think of off the top of my head. Um, if you guys have any books that your kids love, or any classics that you loved as children, please let me know down in the comments. Cause, yeah. And every time when we go out, um, whether to get ice cream or to go for a walk, we always end up passing like by a bookstore, and we always go in and we kind of browse around and see what books are there, and we always pick pick up some books for for baby girl. So she has a pretty good <laughs> she has a pretty good library right now things that we have been contributing, things that our family has been contributing, and also Bahati, Bahati, Bahati Vibe Tribe, you guys have really been, and some new books that I, that are brand new, talking about like, you know, having curly hair, having chocolate skin, like just really fun, fun books that I just can't wait to read to her. So I just wanna say thank you, <laughs> thank you guys so much um, for the congratulations, the love, the warmth, the patience, because I know, I know. I know it's been a lot like it's been the wait has been pretty pretty crazy but everyone's been very very patient with me um you know I give my all and you know I don't tend to try to drag my feet with anything this is definitely a unique situation for sure so I pivoted for a little bit um let me get back into what it was I was talking about Chiron retrograde is teaching us a lot about our uh, a lot about ourselves how we identify this I can really relate to. Let me just put a little another personal story in there. Think about like how Chiron represents our wounded, the wounded healer, the aspect of ourselves, right? And transiting through Aries, Aries is I am. It's how we define ourselves. It's the way that we define ourselves, our ego. And for that reason, sometimes that's how the world kind of sees us. When Chiron started going retrograde, it makes us reflect on these inner dialogues that we tell ourselves, I only operate in this way, especially when it comes to our masculine energy showing up. For me, it's interesting because I was looking at how Chiron retrograde for me through the sign of Aries has been teaching me a lot about my my work ethic, which is benefits a lot of people, right? Bahati life has been in, in around for over 10 years now. It benefits a lot of people. Me grinding, going hard, and that being my sole thing if I bump into someone on the street they're like Jess we know her for her astrology her intuition for energy picking up on vibes her authenticity and her truth for good or for bad right and but what happens now when that shifts a little bit what happens when I am not doing those things what happens when I am not my brand who do I become then and I'm using myself as an example because I think that a lot of you guys can relate to this this is not a new transit this is not a new retrograde it's something that so many of us are kind of facing and, and reconsidering especially especially chiron retrograde and aries when we're all kind of focusing on ourselves and we have to go a little deeper than how we see ourselves or the way that the world sees us and we have to ask ourselves how did we get here like what was it about me and my upbringing or my 
experiences or my past or my history or my internal beliefs? What is it that is ingrained within me that makes me feel like this is who I should be or this is the only way that I can operate? How do I pivot from that and how do I redefine myself? This is not something that happens when you're in your 30s, 20s, 16, 50s. It can happen any time in your life where you find yourself asking yourself, who am I without these things? And it can be really painful, very, very painful and very revealing and very vulnerable to sit with yourself, to face it, to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am not these things. They could be wonderful. They could be successful. They could be powerful. They can be helpful. They can be you know, a part of your legacy, but at the end of the day, who are you when all of those things are stripped away? So this is something that I want to keep, keep you guys on, right? On the ball of life is, you know, um, and when I say the ball of life, like the little balancing act that is that we do as we're human beings, just trying to figure things out. And if you're someone who is a part of the Bahati Vibe Tribe or tuning in to this YouTube channel, there's a reason. It's because you don't think superficial. You're not shallow in any way. You may entertain yourself with those things every once in a while or often, but at the end of the day, you need depth. You need, you need to know. You have awareness. You're seeking. You're seeking greater knowledge. You're seeking greater depth in, in anything. That's what I've noticed about the tribe, and that's what I've noticed within myself. There's always a need for more to get to the root of things, to understand them core to the core. So that... Uh, as we're kind of going through this, definitely keep that as a journal entry if you wanna unpack that a little further, which I encourage you to do if you're in the place to do that. Or, or you could reflect and it can give you awareness and understanding into why you're feeling what is that you're feeling. It could be retirement, it could be you redefining yourself after divorce, it could be you stepping into motherhood it could be you uh, separating from corporate America into being a business owner and what that looks like for you and what that what you expect of yourself. There's so many different things. Actually, let's go ahead and shuffle on that. Chiron retrograde in Aries. Yeah, Queen of Pentacles reverse. Interesting. I'll show you the card in just a second. And the Chariot card. Yeah, there is this question of... Where do we go from here? What is my will? Like you're, when you put your will and your intention and your power and your energy into establishing new for yourself or new structure or life, like a new life for yourself, what does that entail? What does that look like? What does that require from you? Do you feel strong and capable enough to break through those hurdles of this new life and new identity or even to confront yourself there's a lot of um a lot of a lot of that with these two cards okay if you want to dive into the tarot further i have the whole sacred circle tarot school where it's over 70 plus hours video content pre-recorded where i break down the tarot through um astrology well numerology symbolism esoteric symbolism into each of the cards very very thorough so it's a learn on uh, learn on your own on your own pace um okay so uh other things that i want you guys to to look into today is up or this week is opportunity partly because we have the sun transiting through leo in this beautiful sextile with jupiter transiting through gemini this can come through through word of mouth this can come through through creative projects or entertainment purposes like let's say you're out and about mixing and mingling and you hear from someone that there's a job opening or that someone is looking for something like a catering job and you're a cook and you say oh well I just happened to and they're like okay you're hired come in it's all about kind of exploring and getting out asking questions and making yourself the person to the person who's available then it's like the squeaky wheel gets the oil right so it's not annoying it's not forceful it's present it's colorful, it's authentic, and it's a yes. So that's something that you guys will see panning out this week. Also, energy tends to be a little higher this week. We're feeling a little bit more confident within ourselves for the most part. You may also find yourself feeling like you wanna separate or split from people who 
are cocky, overconfident, narcissistic. They're energies that you don't that you would normally tolerate and now this week you just don't have the patience for that, which is good because these are what the retrogrades are also teaching you is I don't vibe with this energy any longer. It doesn't serve me. I don't like it. I don't like you. <laughs> kind of pivot and switch switch it up and change. Um, the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is uh, money. Again, I just really feel like there's uh, opportunity to make more money here for those of you guys that are looking for jobs, part-time jobs, or starting new hobbies, especially when it comes to creative ventures. Don't give up on this. I've been like some of my clients that I've been working through readings with and or that I have in the past worked with them on readings with and they kind of recircle and you know kind of fill in the like fill me in on some of the details and how the predictions that I've said in their readings have come true into fruition or I love to kind of tell people show people what's going on through the transits or also through the tarot but then also give solutions so that they can meet their goals so that we're not just like hey is this is this ever going to happen for me it's like I don't see it, but this is what can help you. So I'm always a person who likes to create the bridge, right? Why? Like, why wouldn't we? <laughs> why wouldn't we do that? So anyway, um, I've been seeing a lot of people who are starting new businesses or adventures for themselves, and especially now, especially right now, and they're like, why? Like, where are the clients? Where are the customers? Where is the Where is the opportunity? It's not. It's usually not a matter of you're not working hard enough, right? You do work hard enough. You just need this opportunity, this foot in the door, or something. You may get like a bite here and there, but it's not enough to support you. So this is one of those transits this week, Venus conjunct Mercury retrograde, especially when it comes to past connections that you hear clarity of, you hear an answer of, you get a resolution, someone circles back and they're like, hey, we, it was a no in the past, but it's a yes now. Are you open? And this is where you can say yes. Also, if you were someone who had already kind of knocked on the door of an opportunity that you would have loved to take advantage of in the past and it was a no then, don't be afraid to revisit and say, I've got some new stuff. I've got this that I've done. If you're open, I can drop it off for you. These are my rates, blah, 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 blah. I don't wanna say the squeaky wheel gets the oil to the point where it's encouraging you to be like disrespectful, you know? Um, if it's a hard no and literally you should not be pushing any further, it's, it's this natural, easy, effortless, I'm in alignment, I love what I do, it feels natural, people vibe with it, they really genuinely, you know, like what it is that I've got going on here, it's not like, clearly this energy is like, you know, okay, you know when someone's like, no, I don't want to work with you, like they politely decline and then that person just keeps knocking, 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 it's just like, yo, bro, I said no, like I don't know how many other times to say, it's, you gotta know you kind of have to feel the energy of the room and don't be someone who pushes past because you're going to do more harm than good, okay? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. One day in the near future, I do want to talk about, like, adding on to Sacred Circle Tarot School, how to merge business with intuition and energy work and tarot and astrology because there's a lot of us that are entering into those territories and there's content but we don't want to be like machines. I've noticed that sometimes about like how people approach business. Let's just go ahead and shuffle and see if there's anything else that we need to hear for this week. And then we're going to go ahead and close on out. Whew. For those of you guys that love the tarot and love these exclusive um, or these readings, I do offer exclusive readings for the collective. It's called Bahati Love Notes. It's a monthly membership. I'll leave a coupon code down below so you can get a huge chunk off. Okay, the card that jumped out is the King of Wands, Temperance, and the Magician card reversed. The King of Wands, the Strength card, and the Magician card reversed. Then we have the Empress card reversed, and we have Rebirth, which is connected to the Judgment card. The tarot deck that I'm working with will be linked down below as well. So first things first, I want to talk to you guys about patience. I want to talk to you about empowerment, and I want to talk to you about self-worth and self-value. These are the energies that are showing up within these cards. This is where 
if you know this is this what i'm hearing is like if you know your worth if you know what you want if you set intention for it then step back and allow it to happen if you are someone who was worrying if you're stressed out and if you haven't brought it to your altar if you haven't brought it to um you know to write a petition or intention we just got out of the leo new moon that was yesterday the fourth it's not too late to set intention for your goals your hopes it's it's good to talk about it but get it onto paper work your magic when it comes to these things right if you are praying and setting intention and you're not being like you're not your emotions aren't involved in it like you're just talking about it by facts like facts and you're not pouring your heart into the divine if you're not pouring your heart into the universe it's not going to be enough to get the ball rolling with that prayer with that intention with that wish you need to put your emotion within it so this is about really knowing what is that you want putting it out there clear if you've done that good fall back allow it to be there's no need to kind of force energies you just know that it will happen when it's time keeping in mind that there's going to be parts of you that are going to need to change shift evolve and pivot as necessary this is something that i talk to my clients about a lot and just people in general they're like i've giving up on prayer i'm giving up on intention because i prayed about this and my i asked for my prayers to be answered they were but it wasn't in the way that it is that i wanted it to so my prayers weren't answered they were answered it wasn't for your highest and greatest good so you were steered away from that if not you would have continued on and carried on and it would have been a regret it wouldn't have been a positive situation um it wouldn't have been a good situation for you trust what doesn't align with you also, trust yourself when it comes to allowing people and energy and especially when it comes to women. Also, trust yourself when it comes to spiritual energy work. I don't know why I want to say that. Just because someone is offering their services to align your chakras or cleanse your energy or whatever, you got to ask for discernment for before you even decide to work with someone. Um, that's not a warning. It just is what it is. Not everybody is meant to work with everyone. Not every client, not every every cash like offering, you know what I mean, is meant to be a, a, an exchange. There have been clients in the past where I'm like, I can't shuffle for you. Like we can't work together. It's not personal. But for whatever reason, my discernment and angels and guides and ancestors are saying that this is a hard no. Here's your refund. Let's split. It's no, no hard feelings. There are millions of other readers out there that will be able to hopefully pour into you. I can give you a recommendation, you know, but I, I won't be the one to do it. So this is about you know, you protecting your energy, you protecting your energy, you prioritizing your energy, your aura. The other thing that I want to talk to you guys about that's coming through the cards is when it comes to women and energies here, if you find yourself in a position where you are disempowered, where you are losing yourself, where you are re where you are prioritizing someone else's happiness and well wishes and what they want over what is works for you to the point where it's even detrimental to you, that's a huge problem. It's got to go. It, it has to go. This is something that it's not it's not good for you to continue to work on it. It's not good for you to continue to carve away at it. Be someone who is willing to be uncomfortable starting over instead of suffering and struggling in a situation where the divine wouldn't want to see you suffering within this place. This is where you, if you don't have the courage, the strength, the conviction to get yourself up and out, you ask for it, you set intention for it, and it will come. So... Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Bahati Love Notes is next. For those of you guys that are subscribed, we are going to start shuffling on the energy of this week even further. We're going to go pretty deep into our circle. That video is going to be up as soon, probably before this video. No, before the end of today. Um, so for those of you guys that I'm going to be meeting in Bahati Love Notes readings, I will see you shortly. For those of you guys that do love tarot and love to go deep with the energy consistently throughout the month, then that is offered for you that the reading service is going to be um, down below. That is going to be a, co a constant even through pregnancy and the rest of delivery and then beyond. It is my routine. I don't step away from it unless I simply cannot. And if that's the case, then I will send an email and we'll pause but we will reconvene because I just love it so much. And it's just a big, big part 
of what it is that I do here. Everyone else, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you've watched the entirety of this video, there was something that I wanted to say. Oh, charms. I was wanting to do a, a reading for charms in the near future. And like a charm reading, not a pick a card reading, but like a charm reading. If you would like, if you can see that and you, you want the charms, because I haven't worked with them in forever, they're right by the window, then comment that down in the, in the comments below that just to kind of give that extra encouragement. If not, then we'll continue per usual. It's no, no big deal. I'll just bring the charms to Bahati Love Notes and pull the charms for them. But yes, if you watch to the end, thank you guys so much. Do make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. It really does help the YouTube channel and just makes me feel like I'm appreciated. <laughs> I mean, I know that I am. I get you guys, I see your comments all the time and your DMs, but you know, it's just nice to see it on every video. <laughs> and then if you are not subscribed, please do subscribe. If you are a subscriber, make sure that you're still subscribed, believe it or not, because the YouTube channel, YouTube, not just mine, but a lot of people's, has been kicking people off of YouTube. I don't know what it's going through, but we did see that with Pluto transiting, especially retrograde, through Aquarius right now. Social media is just getting rocked right now. Have you noticed that? There's like this big migrate migration away from Instagram. <laughs> it's not funny, but I predicted it. Of course I did. It was on. We talked about it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and head out. Bahati Love Notes. I'll see you guys shortly and everyone else. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.